When we say human potential, unleashing human potential, it is not about reaching the peak, it is a trajectory. Because what our life is, is a combination of a certain amount of time and energy. Time is rolling away for all of us at the same pace. If you sit, it rolls away, if you sleep, it rolls away, if you do something, it goes away, if you don't do anything, it goes away. If you're happy or miserable, it goes away. Time is running out for all of us. So it's only the energy that you can do different things with. If you bring your energies to a certain level of intensity and possibility, what somebody does in ten years, you may do it in one year. This means if you live here for hundred years, it feels like in people's impact that you have created, it feels like you lived here for a thousand years, simply because you have managed your life energies in a certain way. So for me, a human being being impactful means, how conscious have you become? This is very important. Because if you're in compulsive cycles, then your energy gets wasted in so many things. If you observe people in a day, let's say, let's take twenty-four hours, in that anyway most people by prescription in America, they sleep for eight hours <laughs> So eight hours means one-third of life is gone. In the remaining two-thirds, they have to eat, they have to, you know, shower, bathroom, this, that, all this, another two, three hours gone. So literally fifty percent of life is gone, daily basis, just for basic maintenance of this life. Fifty percent of the time is gone in maintenance, remaining fifty percent what they have. If you look at every single move that they may make with their body, their thought process, their emotions, you will see a whole lot of it is happening in compulsive cycles. Or in other words, if you are little sensitive to life, you will realize you are the biggest issue in your life. So this is one thing that I am trying to do with people, that you are never the issue in your life. I am not the issue. My thought, my emotion, my body is never the issue. My thought, my emotion, my energy and my body are my instruments of function. They are not impediments in my life. But I would say for ninety percent of the human beings, their own body, then the compulsions of the body, the compulsions of their thought, the compulsions of their emotions are ruling them most of the time. The notion of the difference between pain and suffering I thought was very useful. So pain is physiological, it's there. If there's no pain, most people would not even know how to protect themselves. Mm. See, just because there's no pain in this, see what all you have done to it, isn't it? Mm. See, there's no pain in this. So that's why you took it off. If there's no pain in your nose, maybe you would have taken it off. Because there are many advantages, you will take in about twenty-two percent extra oxygen if you just remove this one thing, contraption <laughs> <laughs> Wherever there is no pain, people are messing with it like crazy, isn't it? They call this hairstyle, they call it so many things. Yeah. Suppose there was no pain in the entire body in Los Angeles, people would pull out their stomach bag and <laughs> you think they wouldn't do it? No, I think they probably would. Only pain is helping them to preserve themselves, isn't it? Mm. So pain is good. There's no physiological pain, most people would not know. I hear in United States there's one group, they call themselves something, I forget that word. They're actually cutting their fingers off, their hands off mm. on the video. Whoa. They're posting it online. There's a group like that. Whoa. Can you imagine this? No. <laughs> in spite of so much pain, if there was no pain, almost everybody would have cut themselves off in, in the name of fashion, they would have cut themselves into ribbons. Wow. So pain is a good thing physically because that is your preservation, uh, self-preservation mechanism. Mm. But suffering is something that you do in your mind. So pain that happens in your body, you take it in your mind and multiply it a thousand times or a million times depending on how capable you are <laughs> or how stupid you are and suffer it a million times over. Right now, most human beings are like this, what happened? Ten years ago, they can still suffer. What may happen day after tomorrow, they already suffer. 
they are not suffering life, they think they are suffering life. They are not suffering life, they are suffering the two most fantastic faculties that human beings alone have, a vivid sense of memory and a fantastic sense of imagination. The survival process has become easier than ever before. Believe me, in the morning if you need a bucket full of water, if you had to walk a mile to the river to get one bucket of water, and your family needed twenty-five buckets of water, hmm. you would have no time to mess yourself. <laughs> now you have lot of time to mess yourself because our survival is better organized than ever before. Hmm. Another thing is, most human beings do not know how to manage their biochemistry without physical activity. I have seen a whole lot of people, particularly teenage boys and girls between the ages of twelve and sixteen, who come to me with some severe violent problems within themselves. If you leave them like that, they may kill themselves or kill somebody else, they're in that kind of state. Many of them have even killed their parents, you know, it has happened all over the world. And uh, in 2017, when I came to know that in India, <laughs> which is not so much suicidal in that sense because there's a huge family support and stuff like that. In spite of that, in 2017, 18,600 children below 18 years of age committed suicide, out of which 7,200 are below 15 years of age. So 12, 13, 14 year olds who must be bubbling with life are wanting to take their own lives. Why? Obviously, we're doing something fundamentally wrong with the society, isn't it? Yes. Our goals and our stupid ideas of what is success is driving them nuts. Because we are trying to use our children like racehorses. That's interesting. <laughs> and when you say that as something to… that represent us, that we've turned into something amazing or in what way are they like racehorses? See, when you understand life as a race, if you're in a race, what's the objective? You must reach the finish line quick, isn't mm. it? Yes. What is the finish line of your life? Death. There you have it. This may not be a conscious process, but life within you is understanding it like that. When you… see, you must understand this, whether you are conscious of, conscious of it or not, any human being. Right now, if you make yourself miserable, you must understand, you are sending a message to every cell in the body that I don't want to live. You might not have articulated it in your head yet, but when you become miserable, you notice suddenly your body seems heavy and it's like, doesn't want to get up from this chair. Have you seen this? Yes. When you're happy, you're willing to bounce at everything and do everything, bend backwards if necessary. Why this is happening is the message has gone to every cell in the body, this guy wants to die. They're all thinking, okay, what can we do to help him? Mm. But by then, of course, you recover. So you want to die, you want to live, you want to die, you want to live. The body is getting confused because you must understand this is a very intelligent body. It's taking instructions from you. Mm. Every cell in the body has enormous sense of memory and intelligence. If you keep sending wrong messages, if they act, you're dead. Because you're sending contradictory messages, you're not dead, you're half dead. You can give it any number of exotic names. Essentially, you have turned your intelligence against yourself. This is supposed to work for you, but now you've turned it against yourself, it's working against you. Perception happens to you in five different dimensions. Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, this is how you're perceiving life. This data… data has gathered within you, only because this data has gathered within you, now you are able to walk on a round planet which spins, it's not a small thing. It is not a small thing that you are able to walk on a spinning round ball. Because all this data has gathered through five senses, it is not intellectual information, but it is a perceptional information. If this information is not there, you won't be able to walk actually. You will not be able to walk straight, this is what is happening for people when some people lose their memory and things like that, suddenly they become unstable in their body because some of the data is gotten disconnected with their system. 
So, this data that you perceive is most important, that's what a child is all the time drinking up everything. You see how the child is looking at everything? Because he wants to drink up as much data as possible, because instinctively he knows without that data, he will not be able to function. So, how attentive you are, how attentive your eyes are, how attentive your ears, nose, tongue and touch is, accordingly you have that much… you know, that much a usable information. Mm -hmm. So why one person is more efficient, well, you are an athlete. Why one person is able to catch a damn ball, <laughs> another person can't catch the damn thing. Why is it? Because that level of attention of exactly how that ball will behave, mm. how you can anticipate where it will go, this is not there. Intellectually, suppose you have a PhD in football, you think you can play football? Uh, <laughs> if you have a PhD, <laughs> I… Th no, I think you need to experience it as well if you just study yeah. it only, yeah. No, that is… that is not experience, it's perception. Mm -hmm. You are… you're watching it, out of your keen interest, you're watching exactly how a ball moves. You may not be thinking the physics of it, but you're watching it and perceiving it. Mm -hmm. Because of that perception, you know something that you cannot know by reading a hundred books about it. First of all, people are assuming that anger is happening to them mm. or misery is happening to them. No, this is exactly what I said earlier, maybe I didn't articulate it fully. No, you are creating anger, you are creating misery, you are creating joy, you are creating whatever. All this is happening from within you. But human experience is happening from within us, isn't it? Right. Whether it's love or hate or anger or misery or joy or anything is only happening from within us. Right. The simple question I am asking is, what happens from within you, should you ha… should it happen your way or somebody else's way? It should happen your way. Of course, because the world will never happen your way hundred percent. Because there are so many stakeholders in the world, little bit will happen my way, little bit your way, that is fine. But what happens within me must happen my way. If what happens within me does not happen my way, this is the worst form of slavery, isn't it? Wow. Somebody decides what happens within me, somebody decides where I should sit. This is slavery, everybody understands this. Hmm. Now somebody decides whether I am happy or unhappy, isn't this the worst form of slavery? Yeah. So this is the liberation that humanity needs to work at. This is what inner engineering means. Inner engineering is not some uh, mechanical process, because engineering means this essentially. You will say something is well engineered only if it works the way you want, isn't mm -hmm. it? If this one doesn't work the way you want, what the hell are you expecting other things to work the way you want? It's just an accident. When you live accidentally, anxiety is normal. Why does one person need… Uh, well, by prescription these days, uh, eight hours, is it? Seven, seven to eight hours. Okay, seven hours. And why another person can do with half of that? See, one thing is, as we already went through, the very physical body that you carry is just the food that you've eaten, isn't it? You are looking at food only as uh, protein, vitamin, mineral like this. But we're talking about a food chain. That means they're all different kinds of lives. What we consume is another form of life. Every animal consumes another form of life. This is the way the food cycle is created. So in what condition that life is will determine in what condition your life is in many ways. So if food appears in front of me, if I just look at it, uh, people have prepared it with elaborate care, if I just look at it, I say no. I say, so no Sadhguru, Sadhguru, this girl, this lady has brought it, she's a very good cook. She's very tasty. I just look at it and say, no. Simply because it's not alive enough for me. It may be tasty, but it's not alive enough for me. If it's not alive enough, I will not consume. If you're just conscious of this one thing, you will see your sleep quota will go down. Another thing is, most people are eating at least fifty percent. Fifty percent means hundred percent more than what they need to eat. Yes, you… you will do one thing, as an experiment, just try this, whatever you're eating, cut it down by fifty percent. 
If you're eating, let's say, uh, two kilograms of food, cut it down to one kilogram and eat variety of foods, you will see you will neither drop weight, nor will you become weak, nor will you become less energetic. Only thing that will happen is, your sleep quota will go down. Because you're putting so much food to generate the same, same amount of energy, you're eating more by compulsion of liking the taste or simply by compulsion of filling yourself up. Now the body has to proce process so much food to create so much energy. This extra processing is taking a toll on the system. The amount of impurities that are there in the food will also determine how how much inertia you generate in the body. Let's understand it this way, in terms of physical terms, what sleep means is inertia. Right now you're dynamic, this is life, inertia sets in. When inertia goes beyond a certain point, that's death. But sleep is a certain kind of death, but it is offering you rest. So restfulness is very important. What is being restful means is, if you sit here, if you are at total ease, you will see the body is naturally restful. If you… have you noticed on a particular day, you are very happy. On that day, you don't need much sleep or food, have you noticed this? That's all you have to do. <laughs> if you remain very joyful every moment of your life, the food will come down, sleep will come down, naturally. It's time to understand all the problems of individual nature are generated from within. And we don't have to solve problems that we create, we just have to dissolve. Problems that you create, you don't have to solve. If there is a problem in the situation, yes, we have to solve. But you have a problem within you, solution is not what you need, solution is madness. Solution means for an illusion, you're creating an illusory solution. Something that you make up, for that you create one more solution that you made up once again. No, we just have to turn off the problems. You're going through a certain drama, only thing is you're a lousy director. That's all there is. Instead of improving your direction, now you're trying to find a solution for a situation in a drama. It's like people watch a cinema and come home and they have big arguments about what happened there. So, the thoughts and emotions that you create, you don't have to find any solution for it. If you just turn it off, it's gone. If you find solution, you moving towards insanity because you create a ghost and you create a ghost buster. <laughs> the ghosts that you create, you must learn to play with them. I'm saying if nobody willing to play with you, you have to play with somebody, right? <laughs> so the ghosts you create, if you like them, you play with them. If you don't like them, turn them off. But Sadhguru, they keep coming <laughs> You don't play. <laughs> don't like to play with them, don't play. They come and go. Never it ever happened that one thought remained for more than a moment, isn't it? It comes and goes, comes and goes. Let it come and go. If you try to find a solution for that, you will head towards Insanity. One thing that you must do to yourself is, you are absolutely truthful to yourself. If you're also truthful to everybody around you, you will get other kinds of benefits with people. But I will not go that far right now. With yourself, you are one hundred percent truthful. Otherwise, all kinds of tricks keep happening. To be truthful to yourself is not a easy thing because there is lifetimes of habit of simply bullshitting yourself. A guest came to Shankaran Pillai's house and 
being a South Indian man, down south, you know, Pillai's come from further down south. He was carrying an umbrella, which is a common thing. In Kerala and southern Tamil Nadu, to carry an umbrella is a very common thing because rains can be very heavy. Then they walked out, he took the guest out, then it started raining. But Shankaran Pillai did not open the umbrella. The guest said, why don't you open the umbrella? Shankaran Pillai said, uh, I'm sorry, the umbrella is full of holes. <laughs> then the guest asked, why did you bring it? Well, I never thought it will rain today. <laughs> A whole lot of people are like this. They think somebody else has to catch their lies. This will take a long time because someone else catching your lies will take lifetimes. You must catch them. You should not let your chickens pass to become hundred percent straight with yourself. It will take a certain amount of application. But if this one thing you do, this piece of life will work for sure, hundred percent. Then figuring out a few things is very simple. For that I am there. If you just fix one this… this one thing that you are one hundred percent straight, no any kind of deception. When there is a hole in the umbrella, you know there is a hole in the umbrella. You will never forget that there is a hole in the umbrella, okay? If you are like this, Rest of the work becomes very simple and easy.